morning. Hello. I suppose I need this keyboard. It's morning time. It is mal breakfast stream. Steven is at a doctor's appointment. I want blanket. It is chilly in here. Where did I get the Geiger shirt? This is a very, very old shirt from somewhere. I've had this for a very long time. It's a good shirt. Stay there, keyboard. Haley says, tell us about a niche interest you know too much about. Ooh. Paint? <laughs> I guess? Paint talk. You can join me for paint talk on my stream, where it's much easier to show off paint and be like, well, let's mix it. Quick have camera talk. Ooh, I can't do that much. I can only talk about film. Analog camera. Garden? We could talk about garden. I talked a little bit about that on Tuesday. Talk about Xenogears. Mm. Facts I know about Xenogears. Um, it's a game Haley likes. And that's it. We have 39 months from the reload. Uh, 39 months from the great, perhaps. An Eddie. The yummy is in the apricot. Tiny Eddie's viscous quadruple dipped pork rind wrapped walrus thins. That is so much, Eddie. <laughs> Thomas I, ah, 264. <laughs> There's a thousand bits from Warrant who says, It's my birthday on Monday. What should my first ever Tiny Eddie snack be for my birthday breakfast? Well, happy early birthday. And, um,. You know, despite being quadruple dipped pork rind wrapped walrus thins, the yummy is in the apricot, which isn't part of that snack. <laughs> it's right there on the box. <laughs> Where it says that feels like a mouthful. Well, they're thins, so they're easier to eat, despite being a whole walrus. <laughs> Happy early birthday to you. I hope you have a good one. Chess says, bring your own apricot. We have 54 months from Jackson Lee Gaming. 500 bits from Gamer Girl Life, who says, good morning, Stephen and Mal. How are you? I have good news. My brother got promoted to be a supervisor. Well, that's great news. We are doing well. Stephen wanted to go get uh, his heart checked out because he's been having some, um, like, heart fluctuations post-COVID, so... He got in and had to go drive to that. So yeah, we're doing well, and congrats to your brother. We have a 19-month resub from Ariane the Anime the Almanac. Bird. Oh, we have Bird on Fire. It's a it's a phoenix. <laughs> Moltres. We have a 17 month resub from I Will Scream Into the Abyss, 67 months from DC20 Will Save, 16 months from Candy Luby, 47 months from Mariel's. <laughs> Why is it on fire? Because it is! Look at him! Look at him! He's on fire. <laughs> Renee says, maybe it's a crow having a really bad day. <laughs> Poor crow. I hope Kepi comes up here. I'm cold. He could snuggle. Haley says, which breakfast stream is going to be dedicated to my birthday? Uh, Tuesday? I don't know. Haley's birthday is tomorrow. We have a 32 month resub from uh, ResD57. 46 months from Floorwolf. 65 months from Arian661, 31 months from Axu Sableye, 500 bits from Jacebook, who says, Good morning. Good malorning, malning bird. <laughs> Thank you, Jacebook. Uh, 
Haley says, uh, my birthday is getting delayed because I had a death in the family and I have to spend it going to a funeral. Yeah, Haley's going to be headed up to Wisconsin for a couple days. And we will celebrate when she gets back. We have a 31 month resub from whatever the heck this is. Uh, 48 months from Queer Quest. Claps for you for hitting the year marks. Uh, and 26 months from Verde Mama. Thank you all for the resubs this morning. <laughs> Mr. Z Game says, well, you aren't a year older until you celebrate. Good vibes. I need coffee. Oh, there we go. We have a three month reserve from Tala Grovehorn. Thank you. Let's see. Hey, Lisa, talk about a niche thing. So. Um, I did a 15 mile bike ride on Tuesday. Tuesday. I want to say it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was. Vagabond, what kind of tomatoes did you plant? It was like 15.8 or something. I'll get to the garden next, even though I think I talked about it on Tuesday. Um, yeah, it was a good bike ride. It said it was my third longest, but I went further than I have. Like, okay, so there's different ways you can go, right? It's not just like one route I take all the time. And I was like, oh, this is further than I've ever been on this route. And then I get back and it's like, that was your third longest bike ride. And I'm like, oh, I did hit some PBs though. <laughs> At least that they claimed, they all claim to be the third longest ride. <laughs> so, um, one of the apps I use tracks like certain parts of the route. And when you rewrite it on different days, it'll tell you like, oh, you did better today on this segment of your ride. So, um, I hit a lot of that on Tuesday and I was proud of myself because like I didn't really bike in February cause I had COVID and I was sick. And then post COVID my heart was doing all funky things and I didn't really want to bike cause it felt weird. I was worried about getting out there and then having a heart rate spike and needing to stop and being seven miles out. And, um, yeah. But now I did about, I walked about eight miles a day average in Japan. Thunderstriker says you didn't bike in Japan. True. I did not bike in Japan. I did find a bike route I want to do next time I go to Japan. So I'm just waiting for that to happen so I can be like, I'm doing this. So, um, yeah, that's, that was fun. Chess says now we zoom in. Chaz convinced me to enter a group cycling thing. It's 10k, which is like half of what I did on Tuesday. Spiffle says, is it the bridge bike ride in Japan? Yes. That is what I want to do next time we go. Thomas says, I legit looked at Japan tickets for November yesterday. November 2024, Thomas? Thomas. Don't get my hopes up. <laughs> they were expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm very sad about it. Uh, Gamer Girl Life gifted a sub to M Tapid. Thank you for the gift sub. And then we had 25 months from Somber Noir. Vegapon says a 10k is 6.21 miles, so less than half. Yeah, so like a 10k is totally doable. But this will be like my first not um, ride around my house thing that I'm going to do. So I'm a little nervous about it because like I don't know anything about fixing flats and I don't have a tube to replace it because I'm allergic. So like I was worried about getting a tube. So what I need to do is I need to find a local person who can teach me things about my bike. <laughs> oh. 
because I don't know anything. I literally, I, I bike and um, I've learned different things about uh, riding with drop handlebars and like different grips. Haley says some shops offer beginner maintenance lessons. The guy Steven bought his bike from, I'm going to talk to him because he offered when Steven bought his bike. Uh, Vagabond says, wait, you're allergic to the bike tires themselves. I'm allergic to the latex and most tires have latex in them and the tube inside the bike, um, I'm pretty sure it's latex. So what I need to do is I need to like get a kit for that, for a tube and like tire repair. And then I need to like put gloves that I can wear in that kit so that if I have to do it, I have those gloves that I can then take off and then not have contaminated hands. That's my plan. But I need someone to teach me because I don't know anything. And my bike needs some maintenance. There's a little bit of a squeak somewhere. And I honestly think it's the water bottle in the water bottle cage. I think that's what's making the noise. We have a 49 month resub from a person dude one. Thank you. Would fabric gloves work best? Um, I'd probably use like a non-latex kitchen glove just because they compress down a little bit more. One second. Um, Haley says we could fly my dad down for private bike lessons. On maintenance? Would he do that next time he's here? Nomi Bookworm says, how did you find out you have a latex allergy? Is it just you had a reaction one day? Scary. Um, yeah, so I was in middle or high school and um, I started having an allergic reaction where like, I think it was my tongue that time was like swelling up, like only half of it. It was super weird. And I had just been to the dentist and like my first thought back in whatever year this was when the internet was not as easy to access, um, was like, oh, I'm allergic to the toothpaste they used. And then I remember calling them the next day and being like, hey, what happened? And they were like, oh, it's probably the latex gloves. And then um, it happened again uh, with, uh, I was blowing up balloons for a party or water balloons or something like that. I didn't know it was like, I didn't know it was the latex at the time when I thought it was the toothpaste. I just didn't know why I was having a problem. And my first thought was toothpaste, not latex, because I didn't think that it was the gloves. I didn't know that someone could be allergic to that. Haley says, it's so baffling since every medical place I know got rid of latex years ago. Well, this was one I was in middle and high school, Haley. So this was like forever ago. But I have been in dentist office that still use latex. Like as an adult, I've been in dentist office that still use latex. And I had to remind them literally every time the dentist walked into the room, don't grab the latex gloves. Every time. And sometimes he still would. And the assistant would be like, no, I already pulled gloves for you. They're here. Use these ones. It was, uh... Not a fun experience. Anyway, um, I don't know the last time I've actually had a reaction to latex because I've avoided it so well. I don't know. I have an allergy test at the end of the month. We'll see how that goes. They might test for latex. Spiffle says, I'm so curious if your allergies have changed. Me too. I'm really curious. Haley says, in the year of our 2012, my medical workplace stopped using uh, latex 12 year or 10 years earlier. Scroll 10 entire years earlier. Well, that would be about when I discovered mine. I'm not sure. We have a 13 month resub from Retro Liz and 48 months from the shark me. Congrats on two years. Wait. Nope, that's not two. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I 
that's four. I can do math. I noticed some of you guys noticed that my emotes updated. Yeah, they got a little bit of a refresh. <laughs> Go to bed. This chest have the thing on screen. Um, it doesn't tell me what year. Vegapon says, just in time for the one year anniversary. Yup. Yup. Anyway, so I entered a bike thing and I need to learn about my bike and um, I am excited to try this for the first time doing a ride for a thing. When is my one year streaming anniversary, I'm tapping asks. I'm not exactly 100% sure. I should probably figure that out soon. Have I been to any Canes games lately? Ooh, that's a good question, Relkin. Um, so the Canes made it into the playoffs, and uh, I forget when that starts. It's like late April. The 13th was my first room. Okay, good to know. Um, so I'd like to go to a playoffs games. Game. Game. Um, I had talked with Nikki and Austin when they were in town, and I was like, you guys should come up for a playoffs game, and we should go. I don't know if they will. I haven't heard from them. I'll have to find out. But what about Raising Canes, though? Slick Duke, there's one in Chapel Hill. Maybe next time I'm in Chapel Hill. But I could also try out a restaurant I haven't been to in Chapel Hill. And he says, cult outing to the playoffs. Not everyone is as interested in hockey as I am. People have expressed interest in hockey, but they're like, well, maybe let's not go to a big game. And we'll go to, like, a smaller game. Maybe at the start of next season, we'll do a group trip. We talked about taking a group trip to the, um, the Durham Bulls and watching baseball. Maybe if Thomas visits, we'll do that. Because I'd like to do that. <laughs> Thomas eyes. <laughs> Chess, that sounds like so much fun! <laughs> Chess says, small hockey, three players each side, 12 minutes, the puck is an Oreo. It's like candlestick bowling or duck pin bowling. That sounds so much fun. Hasta Day says Durham Bowls is fun. Go on fireworks night. It's an experience. And Thomas says, I just pulled up the bowl schedule. Thomas, you just let us know when. You are always welcome, Thomas. Uh, Vegabon wanted me to talk about garden. Um, let's see. I planted tomatoes. Thomas says, but what about Tuesdays when they have $2 tacos and beer? Okay, let's do that. Do they have anything other than beer? Yeah, that sounded like Yoshi's story music to me, too. Valak says. Tom says, you need something else? I don't like beer. At all. I would suffer through a cider. But it would be suffering. <laughs> Fake Wisconsin. Haley, turn in your Wisconsin card. Listen, when I was a young child... My dad was like, have a sip of this, like, every day. Not every day. Like, every time we'd be out, he'd be like, have a sip of this. And every time, I'd be like, I hate this. And I was just convinced all alcohol tasted bad, and adults were crazy. And I have never liked beer. 
he says, yes, I had that too, but then I developed a taste as an adult, like a good Wisconsinite. So, um, let's see. Our last frost for Raleigh is, like, averaging on the 15th, which is in four days from now. Haley says, last time my dad was here, he was shocked to find out I drank beer. I'm in my mid-30s and I feel like all my friends know I like it. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure all of my friends drink beer at some point. Like... It's not always everyone's first choice, but they all will. But I won't. And tapid reminder, April 15th is tax day. Yep. Yep, sure is. Is it the 15th or the 16th this year? It depends on like if it falls on a holiday or a Sunday. See, the other thing that happens with beer is whenever I'm with Carly, Carly... We know a birthday boy on the 15th, too. Who's on the 15th, Thomas? Anyway, Carly... Noah, that's right! Isn't Noah's... I have so many birthdays. Yeah. Because, like, Carly's is the day after. Yeah, it's Noah. Noah's is the 15th. Because, like, I have my mom's birthday, and then Noah, and then Carly, and then my grandma. So it's, like... <laughs> Lots of tax rates. Anyway, when I'm with Carly, Carly will get, like, the skunkiest, grossest beer. And she'll be like, try this, Mal. And then I'll, like, take the smallest sip of it. And I think she just enjoys watching my face look um, disgusted by what I've drank. It's, like, her favorite hobby. <laughs> Sage of Stars. Ah, siblings. As a good sister should. <sighs> she last did it when we went to the hockey game. We were at the hockey game. She's like, try this. She might have done it when I was home for the funeral, but I can't remember. <laughs> Back of a limitation. I just saw Carly a week ago. No, it was not a storm brew. Um, Carly was in Florida, so I got to see her and Kyle. For a second, I thought I was getting a text from Carly. <laughs> anyway, I was moving into garden stuff. Our last frost averages the 15th, so you're not supposed to plant until after that. But a lot of people in the area are like, don't plant till May. But I think I'm going to plant... Why does Siri have a phone call shortcut? I think I might plant the 23rd-ish. I started tomatoes inside. Already. Some of them. Um... Haley found these purple tomatoes and ordered seeds, and I'm super excited about them. And um, I planted them during the solar eclipse. So they feel very mystical because they're purple. Um, so I started those, and they were like, Haley, there were like 15 or 16 seeds in there. There were not 10. I don't know why I thought there were 10. Maybe there were supposed to be 10, but there were extra. So, um,. Our purple moon tomatoes are starting, and they should be up. It was 10, but they gave us extra. Cool. Um, tomatoes germinate, like, in 5 to 10 days, so there might be tomatoes um, popping out of the dirt this weekend. So I'm super excited about that. Um, <laughs> those are totally magic tomatoes. I couldn't stop 
but like I had to think, I had to go play the uh, Solar Total Eclipse of the Sun uh, Little Shop of Horrors song. It's not quite the same deal. I wasn't trying to buy a house plant on the street, but I did think of that. So, uh, Daru. And then uh, I ordered other seeds and they've shipped, but they aren't here yet. And the other thing I need to plant right away is I need to start the honeydew melons. So when I get the seeds, those are next. I'm gonna put the honeydew melons in the other planters I have. We have a 59 month resub from Death Sun Lee and 63 months from Vegetable Sorbet. Thank you both. I've never heard of green zebras. Nunchu says someone at a seed fair convinced me to try tomatoes called green zebras. Never heard of those. Hi, Noah. We were just talking about how I couldn't remember what day your birthday was. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thomas was like, there's a birthday on the 15th. And I'm like, who? My sister's is the day after. <laughs> Don't say that. One of you is going to tell him. It's better to be honest. Skit Scott says, no watermelon this year. No. Um, I'm planting honeydew melon instead. Hi, Capo. Come here. I know your favorite person is not in the house. I know. Come here. It's almost time for your meds in three minutes. He just walked up the stairs and sat down. But second favorite person. Second favorite person is Brandon, and Brandon is also not here. Just me, the third favorite person. I might have slipped further. Kepler and Jeff bonded while we were in Japan. All right, the other plants I'm planting, I'm planting um, Cherokee Purple Tomatoes, which we grew last year, and Sun Golds, which we also grew last year. And then I'm gonna do a fourth tomato plant, and I haven't decided yet. It may just depend what is at the garden center when I go pick them up. Because the rest of them I'm starting from a starter, like the, the actual plant you would see in the garden center. But the purple tomatoes don't come that way, so I had to start them from seed. Hi. It's almost pill time. I'm gonna have to step away from the stream for a minute and pill the kitty. How many pepper plants? No pepper plants this year. Oh, he jumped in his helper chair that oversees his food dish. And he says, are they tiny or big tomatoes? Two will be full-size tomatoes and two will be tiny cherries. Pill him on stream. Mmm, no. He's in his helper chair. So, um, I'm just gonna go grab it and then pill cat. <laughs> I'm gonna let him lay down and then I'm gonna go do it. Can you roll helper chair over? No, he's gonna lay down. I don't wanna stress him out. I already have to stress him out by pilling him. Catch him unaware. Exactly. Spin a drop says, I'm going to try tomatoes from seed in hanging baskets. What will happen? Who can say? Adventure. Um, there was like a big thing in like 2007 where everyone was growing tomatoes from like hanging bags. Like they had a bag and you hang it and you like put the tomato upside down in it and then hang the tomato upside down from the bottom and I've never tried that but my aunt did one of my aunts tried it and I don't know how successful it was what I want to do and I can't do this year because I'm trying something different <laughs> there's my pill Kepler alarm Says, it was called a hanging bag. Thank you for telling us it was a bag and you hang it. 
Nessasaurus is watering his heart. Yeah, the weight on that was, I know, difficult. Alright, Chaz, I have to go pill the cat. He laid down. One second. I think I did good. Yeah, go get your food. Good boy. <laughs> I blinked, what happened? Had to pill the cat. His new med is large. I also caught him unaware. Facebook gifted a sub to Wasabi Milkshake. Thank you for the gift sub to Alex. And then he got some food. He's happy now. I feel better if he eats right after because then I know like it's definitely going to go down into his belly. And not like he going to spit it back out in a minute. Alex is like us hiding in the closet shivering because there's a small amount of rain. Oh, poor Laika. Hi. You gonna snuggle, snuggle now? Come here, sweetheart. Come here, darling. Who's the good boy? It's Keppo. It's Keppo. Hi, come here. Oh, he's a good boy. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Who's the best kitty? Yes. Hi. Oh, we're purring. We're happy. Can we lay down? Can we lay down? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, we're purring. We're happy. What's on your head? Oh, good boy. <laughs> Why, Pill? Pill. Pill's good for you. Yes. Um, we went over to check on Chaz and Jeff's cats while they were gone. We did it twice, and they uh, one of them had to be pilled. And Steven did it, because he's gotten really good about pilling Kepler. And the first day it was like, that was great, that was easy. And the second day it was not so easy. Hi, sweetie. Good boy. Chaz, Steven said, uh, Kepler is easier to pill, by the way. Which I found interesting, because I think Kepler's difficult to pill, but I did not try pilling Koth. Chaz says, Koth has gotten better. Hi, sweetie. Who's a good boy? We're happy, yeah. Shove pill down your throat. You jump on my lap. <laughs> Lunar says, my work can wait. There's a Kepler on stream to watch. I'd scoop him up, but then he'll want to leave. So, we'll just leave him here where he's cozy. We'll wrap blanket around him, though. Yeah. Not on him, because we don't... We know he doesn't like that. Cheese Hammer gifted a sub, too. My butt smells like toast. 
That would be so... It not would be. That is so apt for breakfast stream. Hi, cutie. Good boy. Uh, we were talking about gardening. Anyway, we were talking about tomatoes and how people have uh, grown them hanging. Um, instead of, like, from the ground up. And one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to do a full trellis of my tom tomatoes Coffee. because tomato cages are such a pain. Like, they're not very sturdy and tomatoes get tall, especially if you're growing indeterminate tomatoes instead of determinate tomatoes. Because uh, they vine. Tomatoes are vines. So, like, I'm buying this cattle panel, which is 16 foot by 50 inches. So the thing is massive, and I'm going to make an arch in the garden, because the garden is C-shaped. And so I was like, oh, I could just grow the tomatoes on that. But then I decided I wanted to grow green beans and snap peas. So now they get the trellis. <laughs> and the tomatoes go back into cages, and we just deal with it. Any plans for deer deterrent this year? Um... My hope is to get more like a hair, because I feel like that was the most successful thing that I did last year. So I'm gonna try that. Haley says that can be arranged. Yeah, Haley, can you start saving like a hair for me? Like when she brushes Leica the hair, last year I kind of just sprinkled it around and it seemed to help the most. I also have a spray that smells really gross. I could also probably sprinkle Kepler hair. I don't know if that would help any. <laughs> Haley says my parents swear by dog hair. It seems to work. You just bring Laika over every so often to walk around my yard. <laughs> 300 bits from Jace Book who says Kepler Kepler praise be. He's purring. He's happy. We have a 10 month resub from uh, Jintoki006. Thank you. Slickduke says, I forgot, did the Irish Spring not work or not work well? So, we had cut up the Irish Spring and then it just kind of crumbled. So, what I need to do next year, this year, is I need to leave it whole. Because um, it just kind of fell apart. And that was not great. It's mostly the scent of Leica, I think, that would keep deer away. Circle Now Squared says, Really? My mom shaved it on purpose to sprinkle around. I think I just... I don't know. If it stays whole, then, like, the scent is still there and around. I don't know. I thought about buying more cattle panels and, like, putting T-posts on each of the corners of the garden and then just tying T-posts or uh, the cattle panel around so it was like a taller fence and a sturdier fence um, around the garden. Hi, sweetheart. The wood that the garden is in for the raised bed is falling apart because it's not treated for outdoor, I think. But um, I'm renting and I'm not willing to put in a ton of money <laughs> to something that is not mine, that will not be mine after I leave here. So um, I'm just going to build the arch because I need something to trellis the peas and snap peas on. Peas and green beans on. And then the other thing I'm going to try this year is I'm going to try corn. I've never grown corn. I don't know if I have enough room for corn because uh, like there's certain, like how the pollination works of it. Like how much they recommend you plant. I don't know if I have enough room for that. So we're going to try. Because why not? The only thing I'm growing this year that I've grown before is radishes and tomatoes. <laughs> How long does corn take? Did you already need to start? No, you can't put anything in the ground until after your frost is over and we average our last frost in a few days. So like, I don't have anything in the ground outdoors yet and corn is a direct sow into the ground because its roots are fragile when it's young. So you don't want to transplant corn, from what I was reading. So I'm still good on corn. I should have started uh, the tomatoes by seed and the melon by seed, 
uh, before Japan, but that was before Japan, and that would have been difficult by um, having our friends take care of it. So it's just going to be a little late, and that's fine. I didn't have any time before Japan to plan the garden either, so we're going to do what we can. I'm not super worried about it. We have 300 bits from Tree Campia who says, Good vibes to spread. Uh, though I'm still dealing with all the stuff from Tuesday, I have an extended weekend starting today. I'm participating in online convention as an artist to commission, and I'm very excited. Congratulations! That's super cool that you're participating in that. I hope you have a good weekend doing all that. Have I thought about doing potted herbs? Um... I thought about it and putting them on the screened in porch, but um, I don't know. I, I need like some sort of like shelving system to put them on if I do that, because otherwise they're just going to sit on the ground. And right now um, it's pollen season and there is a lot of pollen out there on the screened in porch. And what I need to do is once pollen season is over, take off the covers for the furniture out there and clean them because they're yellow right now. And then I need to probably clean the outdoor rug and I need to probably clean the ground or the porch itself. So that's gonna be a whole thing before people are allowed to go back out there. Dream Canyon says you could ask Luca about her gardening escapades. I actually just talked to her yesterday about it. We were talking about growing um, different things that you can use for tea, like chamomile. Cheese Hammer gifted a sub too. My butt smells like cream corn. <laughs> but yeah, it's pollen season and everything is really disgusting outside. So it's going to be a whole lot of work to get the patio back so we can sit on it. But I think pollen is about over at the end of the month, so there's not really a good point in doing it yet. Not happy about that. Sorry. Let me update Steven with this. So he knows that Kepler got his meds. Haley says, imagine being allergic to pollen. I don't know if I'm allergic to the pollen that we have here. I'll know at the end of the month. I'm allergic to some things for sure, but I don't know if I'm allergic to this pollen that we have now. Because I did a blood test that was like, ooh, you have a lot of allergies. We're gonna send you to an allergist for the skin prick test. And I'm like, cool, love that. Hi. Can we snuggle more? What if we snuggle more like this? Yes. There we go. Good boy. Sorry. You're a big cat. Finally, Kepler is all to yourself. Yeah, when I'm the only person in the house, then I am the favorite person in the house. Is he chirping or is that tummy? It's a little bit of both. Like, he's making a few little noises with his, like, mouth throat, but also his belly is making a little bit of noises. Hi, this is your foot. Quiet Redhead says, I'm very allergic to those tall North Carolina pine trees. Yeah, those are the ones that are um, giving the yellow dust right now everywhere. It's bad. It was real bad. We hit records the day we got back from Japan. They were like, this is 
this is some of the records we've broken in Raleigh. It was like, normally we're at like 3,000 and we hit 5,000. Which apparently is just wild. Good kitty. Hi. Who's a good boy? Hi, sweetheart. I get to be Steven today. Running breakfast stream, Kepler. So yeah, that's my garden plan. I mentioned the radishes kind of offhandedly, but we're gonna do radishes. They only take like 28 days to grow. So I'll probably plant something thereafter. And I'm kind of thinking of putting some parsley in for, um, I mostly wanna grow it for butterflies and caterpillars because monarchs like it and uh, swallowtails like it. Hi, are we done? Are we done? No, do we just want to flip? Okay. Don't walk on the keyboard though, thank you. Goodbye. Where you going? See you later. <sighs> what else is going on? I'm trying to think. <laughs> he has a business meeting, yeah. You gotta go meet with some people. Are there other later growing plants? That's a good question. Um, originally I had planned on doing a fall garden and a early spring garden, but um, fall garden didn't happen because I had surgery and spring garden didn't happen because I was thinking about Japan and how difficult that would be to deal with for two weeks while I was gone. So then I was like, I'll just plant in the summer. So this is me getting ready for summer, but I could plant some things much later. And it would probably be more like September I plant something. And I don't know what I want to do yet. Coffee. We have 300 bits from Danny who says, Well, my time has come again. Time to head out for another cruise ship contract. This is the last stream I can see till October. It's been nice having you here for a while, Danny. I know you liked uh, the last contract run you did and I think that's super cool. I hope you have a good time. Coffee. Danny says, unless they finally get back to me about the audition I submitted to be a dancer on the ships after two months of not hearing from them, then I'll probably come home for a few weeks before going on that contract. Well, good vibes for that audition and I hope you hear back soon. But regardless, I hope you have fun. I hope it's a good time. It's super cool, like, I don't know, hearing about people who have sort of like different work and life, things like that. I think that's neat. Like hearing about Paul and all his travels and how his work works is super fascinating to me. And yours is very much in the same vein of like, oh, I go live on a cruise ship for six months. It's very neat. Is that a Giga shirt? Yeah, it's a very, very old Giga shirt. We were talking about it earlier. I don't remember where I got it. I've had it forever. Is there no internet on cruise ships? Um, I know that, or I've read that even if you are employed on the cruise ship, you have to pay for the internet. So I think that's part of it. Also, it's not very fast from what I know. See, I can't see that far. Um, Danny says, there's internet, but I have to pay for it and it, it, is, it is bad. I imagine it's much like the internet on um, like Amtrak, which I just experienced where uh, it's not great or like planes where you have to pay for it and it's not great. <sighs> Airplane internet, it's a thing. Yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Joltron says Amtrak finally got Wi-Fi in their trains. Uh, sort of. I just took the um, Starlight? What was it? The East Coast one that goes down to like Miami from here to Orlando and 
we really only had Wi-Fi when we were near stations, and then otherwise we didn't. It was not great. I did not take the bright line. I was on Amtrak from Raleigh to Orlando. The Shinkansen had internet. Unless you went through a tunnel, then you didn't have internet. <laughs> and he says, train trip, how was that? Um, it was that. It was that so much that I flew home. And I had, thankfully, paid a few extra dollars and got refundable seats on the train. So I was able to get my money back. And then I flew home. I flew home for a couple reasons, but uh, one was which I didn't want to take the train home. Um, and it would have been fine if I had had a window seat from the get-go, because I didn't at first and I was getting motion sick. And then there was a light on all night because it was uh, like 10 to 10, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. was like my transit. And there was a light on the ceiling, like right here, all night. And it was right where the door was, where the cars connected. So like people were coming in and out the whole time and that really sucked. And finally I asked the conductor, I was like, hey, I need to move. I am motion sick. Is there a window somewhere? Um, something. Can I go sit in the dining car overnight? I don't care if I can't get any food. I'm not sleeping anyway. I'm jet lagged from being out of the country. And he's like, let me find you a window. And he found me a window. And then I got two seats next to each other with a window. It was great. And then I had, I wouldn't say a lovely time, but a better time. The seats were more comfortable than plain seats. You had way more room. They reclined a lot further. Your window was bigger. Um, and you don't get assigned seats like you do on a plane. Like when you book a plane ticket for most airlines, you're like, oh, I want to sit in seat like 32B or whatever. Um, what happened was when I got to the station, I gave them my ticket. Well, they scanned the QR code and they're like, all right, you're going to go sit in um, 30D. And I'm like, okay. So I get up and he's like, it's to the left. So I walk to the left and it's right there. And they just put like a little slip above you that tells them where you're getting off the train so that they can remind you that your stop is coming up. So like that I needed to know. And then when he moved me, he just moved the slip of paper up to where I moved. Um, so there were things about the train I liked. If it was during the day for the amount of time it took me to get from spot A to spot B, that would have been fine because I could have looked out and I would have enjoyed watching everything because the sun didn't really come up till we hit Jacksonville. And then I had a love, like I had a great time once the sun came up. I was very tired, but like I could look out. I had a window. The seat was way comfier than a plane. Um, so that was nice. Uh, I thought it was quite dirty, but I don't know if it was like where I was or like just the particular thing. Um, if I had been with someone, that would have been fine because then I would have had someone to talk to or um, like I didn't feel comfortable leaving my things because I had never been on a train before and I didn't want to leave my stuff in my seat like if I was going to like a dining car or something. I don't think the train I was on had a viewing car. So... I don't think like I could have gone there and I wouldn't have wanted to leave my stuff. I don't know. I was all by myself. So those things would have made it better um, or having a room like on a sleeper car. So having a roomette or like a full room would have been nice too. Like those are reasons I would take it again. But by myself from Raleigh to Orlando, nah. Overnight by myself now. Jolteron says, that's fair. I would have dragged my backpack with me if I was on a train solo. And that's what I did. I didn't need to go anywhere. Um, like, I didn't have to get up and move, except when I moved seats. So, like, that was fine. But otherwise, I would have been like, ah, dang it. And I have to take my backpack with me. Kiwili Scipio says, I uh, take the Amtrak up to DC a few times, never done an overnight ride, but the number of times I've done it has been, it's been nice. Yeah, like, um, from Raleigh to DC isn't as far, and I think it's a day train, like, during the day. So, like, that would have been fine. 
or the Northeast Corridor is apparently much better than um, Raleigh to Orlando. I don't know. I tried to do the bid up because you can do bid up and get a room sometimes. And I was like, oh, I'm willing to pay X amount for an addition to my ticket already to get a room. And I did not get it. And I was not willing to risk that again for the ride home. Adrian Kell says Maine actually has a local-ish Amtrak line. The Down Easter is a straight shot to Boston and is better than a bus. Um, I'm actually looking at taking that in the fall. I have a wedding to go to in Maine. And I'm thinking about flying into Boston. I'm also thinking about like taking the train to DC and then staying overnight and then taking the train up to Maine because then I have all day trains and I don't have an overnight on the train without a room. So those are things I'm thinking about. I haven't decided yet. Wedding Jepson? No, it's family. I have a family member getting married. <laughs> Noah, take the train to Philly. I thought about it, Noah. Thinking about it. I haven't decided yet. I haven't booked anything. I need to. Uh, we have a 38-month resub from Quill in the Stars. Thank you. Some people have taken Charleston to DC or Charleston to Orlando. Like, like I said, if it had been daytime and I could have just sat and had daylight and read a book, because I had a physical book with me. I did have digital. I did read on my phone most of the night. But um, it would have been so much better if it was daytime. I did not enjoy overnight train and coach seat, especially when most of it was without a window. I was very miserable for that part. And I didn't want to risk it coming home when there was other stuff going on. <sighs> All right. I need to get Kepler actual food instead of just a handful of kibbles and give him his Serenia. So what's coming up? Steven said, oh, thank you, Chaz. Here's the Patreon ticker. If you're interested in supporting Steven and myself, you can check out the links in chat. We appreciate all of our patrons and our beans. Thank you for running beans, Chaz. Um, things that are coming up. Steven talked about maybe finishing Loco Roco today when he gets back from his doctor's appointment. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be. You'll have to, like, subscribe here on Twitch or check Twitter or wherever he's going to post about it. Um, so I'm not sure if he's doing that for sure. But I think he was planning on it. And I don't think he responded to my I gave Kepler medicine and it went really well message. Vagabond says, I think he said maybe 4 p.m. Can't be sure though, so don't quote me on that. Um, I don't remember. I did talk to him this morning. He turned on all of this for me this morning before he left. So I'm not sure. My watch keeps saying, hey, I'm just making sure it's not him. So yeah, at some point he may stream today, the rest of Loco Roco. I'm not sure. Um, otherwise, tomorrow is Friday and we will be playing Zelda right here at the time we normally play Zelda. Which is... 8. Um, yeah, we're going to be playing Tears of the Kingdom, and I believe we were in Lurlin Village. We had gotten there and cleared everything out, but we hadn't done much otherwise. <laughs> Professional streamer Mallory. Yes. Um, and then other things coming up. Um, I think the next stream after that is Tuesday morning breakfast stream. I will be streaming the final part of the Grisai painting next week sometime. I'm almost done with it. I need to add some more yellow on the left side and I need to do the trees that have red orange on them and then that's done because it's real close to being done. But um, I have my year stream anniversaries apparently technically in two days but I think I'm going to like 
celebrate that the week after. Which would be like 21st or something. I don't know yet. We gotta test some things out and see if it works. Because I have a plan. What's next Tuesday game? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know if we talked about it. Alright. Um, so those are the things that are coming up. Chaz, is there anything else I'm missing? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. Okay, cool. Yeah, the Peach game would be cool. I'm, I do want to play the Peach game, but I don't know if that's going to be what we do next week. Alright, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, do I have a, a dome? I don't. Garden dome? Okay, we'll do that. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, oh, train dome is so good. <laughs> you should check out the latest vlog. Thank you, Vagabond. Go do that. Um, so, yeah, I hope everyone has a good day, and I will see you tomorrow for Zelda. Oh, it's this one. <laughs>